Well, welcome back. I'm George. We've got a special today. Now, um, oh, we're going to do a peach brandy from start to finish. So this will be several videos, I would imagine, at some point in time, but we want to get it started now. So welcome. Hey, don't forget to comment below, of course, subscribe, share us with your friends, all that other stuff. Good. I got that out of the way. Let's get down to business. Oh, you know, I've still got the... Still got the steel we're working on. Uh, we're gonna make some progress. I still haven't cut the hole out in the top yet. I've been sidetracked a little bit. Uh, you know, of course, answering questions, emails, comments. Uh, plus, I've been working on the T500 yesterday. Uh, that should be coming out pretty soon. I'm getting ready to do the eight gallon, three inch uh, pot still today. We're gonna run that uh, nine month old mash I have. Uh, but I wanted to get to this so that I can, let me move this out of the way so that I can get started on a, a, a peach brandy, which is so easy to make and is so straightforward. Now I'm gonna take you through this step by step so you'll understand how to do it as well. Uh, what I've got is, of course, I got my star sand so I can spray my bucket. I'm gonna use a bucket on this one because it's so straightforward and easy. Um, and my fast ferments are already full. Oh, uh, I've got eight cans of this uh, yellow clean sliced peaches in light syrup. Now, why did I select these? I selected these, for first of all, for the price. I was at Sam's, they're like six bucks a can. Oh, that's not the only reason. Uh, you turn it over on the back, and if you read the ingredients, and what's really, really interesting is right here, ingredients. And you'll see that nowhere in there in those ingredients do you find any sorbates or preservatives or anything else in there that may interfere with my development of a healthy yeast colony. Hmm. Plus, oh, if you look at this close enough, uh, and all these will be just a little bit different, so don't get wrapped up around the axle, but you'll see there is total sugar, 16 grams, includes 9 grams of additional sugar, 18%. Uh, oh, this thing is just full of what we're looking for because it's made with corn sugar, corn syrup, uh, what... I gotta read those in directions. High fructose corn syrup and sugar, and corn syrup, water, and peaches. That's all there is to it. Now, we're gonna, in order to know exactly how much of this we need, because there's gonna be some hard peaches in there, we'll, we'll crush those in the bucket. I'll go ahead and ferment right on them, I don't mind. Uh, and we'll strain them out later. Uh, but what we'll do is we're gonna do a test. We're gonna mix one can with one gallon of water, and then we'll test the gravity and what's that? That's a data point for us. So I'll be able to mathematically figure out how many cans and how many gallons of water do I need to achieve my target initial gravity of 1.090, 1 1.100. Cause I'm looking at about a 14% alcohol by volume. I like working with that when it comes to distilling because it's just so much easier to manage. Now, of course, I got my hydrometer I'll be working with, and what I'm gonna use instead of distiller's yeast in this particular case. Now, there's, a, there's plenty of nutrients. Don't worry about yeast nutrient for this. Um, what I'm gonna use, I've got three different styles of Lalvin uh, wine yeast, uh, and all three of these are really good. Now, why do I have three different ones? Well, I'm gonna use pitch one, and I'll probably pitch this, no, I'm, actually, I'm gonna pitch the 71 Bravo 1122, um, and it's a really good healthy yeast. Uh, but it's good for six gallons. I'll pitch that. Um, that should do it, but if it doesn't, and something goes what I call cattywampus, and it, for some reason it stops, or I have to reintroduce yeast, um, I'll introduce a different strain. Um, this will be the K1 Victor 1116. I know it's a long, long number, but I'll introduce that one, or I'll introduce this one, one of the two, because I just don't want to try to reintroduce the same yeast when I'm using a wine yeast. Uh, I want to try to change the family just a little bit to see if I can get uh, that thing to continue fermenting. Now, this is only in case. Uh, I'm more than certain that uh, this will be fine, and we'll keep track of that through the videos of uh, how it's fermenting and how things are developing along. Oh, yeah. I Let's get to it. As promised. Okay, we've got our can of peaches. I've got my bucket. Uh, I've already sprayed it with star sand, so, you know, but that's said, I'm going to use that. I've got a gallon of water and everything else. Let's, let's do this, all right? So first I'll introduce that one full can of peaches. 
Okay, now what are we trying to find out? We're trying to determine what one gallon of water and one can of these peaches with all that syrup, what is the gravity so that mathematically we'll know what we need for our six gallon batch. And I've got a potato masher already sprayed. All I'm gonna do is mash these up the eh, best I can. Mix that up nice and good. Now what we're going to determine is what is the initial gravity of that one can and one gallon. Now you know that a hydrometer is, I got some solids in there, that might throw it off just a little bit, but I'm not that concerned. I'm just looking for a data point. Uh, these are calibrated 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, there, there is a correction calculator online. Just type in correction formula hydrometer. Uh, it'll tell you based on the temperature how it'll read. It's usually not that far off unless you're like 20 or 30 degrees off from 60. Okay. Looks to be as though we're at 1.020. 1.020. Now that's a little bit less than what it would have been if I use, remember, one pound of corn sugar and one gallon of water is 39 gravity points. So it, should, it would have been floating at 1.039, 39 gravity points. Now here's what I know. If I'm at 2.0, two cans in one gallon, I'd be floating at 4.0 three cans and two gallons, I'd be floating at six zero. Four cans in that gallon. Four cans in that gallon, I'm just about where I want to be. So what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna introduce one, two, three more cans, and then we're gonna test it again and find out what our gravity is. And we've got the volume because of the syrup and the water already. We'll know if we have to add some more water or some more syrup. Well, let's get to that. There, now that's a bucket of some really good a peach slurry. Now what we have done is we have introduced five cans into uh, this bucket with one gallon of water so right now the viscosity is going to be my challenge um, and what I've picked up from that is you'll see that I can't get a really see that start it's bouncing around when it starts floating this hydrometer so what I'm finding out is, is that the, so the solid particulates in this is causing me to not be able to read this mm. because of its viscosity. So it's not any longer like a, uh, a water, the viscosity of water. It's quite a bit thicker uh, with all that syrup in there and then all those solids from the peaches. So what I need to fall back on is I need to default back to my original reading, which was 20 gravity points uh, per can per gallon. So the 20 gravity points per can in that one gallon, I just started adding those together. So right now I should be at, uh, I can say my data point now is 1.100. So if I take that 1.100 and I convert that myself, I roll it across over to my potential alcohol scale, I'm about somewhere around 14%. And that, remember that was what our data point was, that's what our goal was. So we will shortly introduce our yeast and this time and you know I don't normally do this I normally just sprinkle the yeast and just let it go uh, but we've had the question so we're gonna do a yeast starter what the heck you know and the best thing to use for a yeast starter is the medium in which you are about to ferment so let me get a jug of it and I'll show you what we're gonna do well we have a jug or a jar of our uh, peach wash here and what I did was I heated up, I put it in the microwave for a few seconds, all right? And what I wanted to do is I wanted to get this to around 90 degrees to just get it started. Make that, make that environment more hospitable to develop a colony. And we're gonna add the yeast. And what will happen is after that, is once this yeast colony develops and we see it foam, we're gonna introduce that into here. Um, and it's already in the same environment from the jar into the bucket, so we should have some good fermentation happening, like, pretty quick. Let's give this some time and we'll be back. 
We are now. If you can recall the color of this before I added the yeast uh, and the color of it now, you'll know there's a discernible difference. Um, and I've got a krausiness developed on the top. Now I can let this sit for a little bit longer and it'll, it would probably overflow. I don't want that to happen. So right now I have a very viable yeast colony that's already started to develop. And it's developing in the same medium that I'm going to ferment. So I'm now going to just add this to that. Um, and then we're going to put the airlock on it. We'll set it aside. And then you and I will get caught up later on. Happy distilling. Come all you moonshiners, if you want to hear about the kind of booze that's around here. Made way back in Pauline.